Hello and welcome to this edition of Communion of Saints. I'm Father Jim Corda. And I'm Father Jack Lavelle. During our Communion of Saints episodes, we are going to introduce you to some of the saints in the Catholic Church. And Father Lavelle and I will talk primarily about that particular saint, some of the details that surround their life, but also talk a little bit about how it relates to our life here in the 21st century. The first saint that we're going to discuss is Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Let's talk about her. Well, she has a very interesting story. First, of course, that is her name as a canonized saint, but people who knew her as a young girl knew her as Edith Stein. Uh, she was a, a German Jewish philosopher, uh, a very bright young girl, and yet philosophy, we have to believe, being her study and her passion, sought her to search out the truth. And it really intermingled then with her journey of faith. And it invited her to uh, certainly have a great affection for her Jewish roots, but she found the truth in Christianity. And so this uh, very educated woman converts to Catholicism. The interesting thing uh, that I found in, in preparing for her particular uh, segment was that she really discovered Christianity at a young age. You know, it wasn't like in her um, uh, adult life, but it was more around the age of like 10 or 12 mm -hmm. that she discovered this, uh, this desire to want to unite herself to Christ. And obviously we saw in her life and her sufferings, uniting it to Christ on the cross. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this, the historical situation that, uh, uh, that Edith Stein was in. Uh, who, who was president, what was going on in the world at that time? Well, if you look at our nation, uh, certainly we were uh, in the midst of World War II at the time of her death, uh, her being imprisoned uh, because of her faith and because of originally being a Jew, but then later converting to Christianity. Uh, that we can discuss in a moment was a problem, but uh, she would have been a, uh, an age contemporary of President Roosevelt's. Uh, she was born, I believe, one or two years after he was born. Uh, he was president. And uh, what's really raging through Europe is the Nazi dictatorship that is not only uh, wreaking havoc on Jewish communities, but many people forget on a lot of Christian communities as well. Well, you know, what's interesting uh, in the lives of uh, what I would consider contemporary martyrs is that um, th there was some th this persecution that went on in their country and in their life and it permeated not just uh, Germany obviously at the time but mm -hmm. but for uh, Edith Stein going into the Netherlands where she was a Carmelite nun. Uh, let's talk a little bit about her conversion uh, in, in her being drawn to the Carmelites. You know, we know the Carmelites obviously is a, a cloistered order mm -hmm. um, founded on uh, Mount Carmel outside of uh, Jerusalem. And so there's that whole sense that um, she's gathered in prayer with these other religious women. And I believe her sister was also a Carmelite nun with her. Yes. And so there's this whole sense of community that's there. And then, uh, of course, uh, not being safe in her own country, mm -hmm. you know, um, and how difficult that would have been at the time. Uh, we're down to the last uh, five minutes of our first segment. Let's talk a little bit about what perhaps happened in her life during that Auschwitz experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I think before we get there, just to touch on what you mentioned about community, I think it's very interesting to, to look at the, perhaps the psyche of Edith Stein. You know, uh, discovering Christianity and discerning what her role will be in it at a young age, but her faith, you could say, kind of grew up with also her intellectual pursuits. Mm -hmm. And so again, to go back to that sense of, of philosophy and that study of truth, and that study of relationship. How do we respond and react mm -hmm. and relate to each other? And yet that study itself can be very contemplative. Mm -hmm. And I think that is hallmarked by her religious life. It is one of community. It is one of seeking the truth together and relationship, but then also a very contemplative life as well um, in prayer. Now with what was going on in the Netherlands, I, I know for many of our, our viewers, they certainly know the story of Anne Frank. 
And so we see the persecution that was going on in the Netherlands. One of the things that's interesting about why Edith Stein was imprisoned and sent to Auschwitz was her pursuit of her Christian faith. And at that time, the bishops of the Netherlands had um, come out against Nazism and really striving to advance uh, really the social teaching and the moral caliber of the church. And it is in retaliation then that the Nazis wreak havoc on the Netherlands and certainly then Edith Stein, Teresa Benedict of the Cross becomes one of many victims. It's interesting because um, as I had read about her life that uh, when she was uh, taken away with her sister uh, to the concentration camp that her her community of sisters tried everything that they could to, to keep her and to save her, but she went joyfully. She mm -hmm. said, don't worry about me, you know, pray for yourselves, pray for the world. And so there's a sense that she went out and, and to her death, uh, joyful and at peace. Mm -hmm. and, and let's go back to her name. She had a devotion to St. Teresa of Avila. Mm -hmm. And so hence she took the name of Teresa and then uh, of the cross. You know, obviously, again, tying herself to Christ on the cross. Um, she was uh, canonized. Uh, she was actually beatified in 1987 and then was canonized in 1999 uh, by John Paul II. Um, her feast is August 9th. Uh, what else could we talk about for uh, Edith Stein? Well, I think one of the things you bring out, certainly in her devotion to the cross and in her martyrdom, which I think is true for all martyrs, they pattern themselves after the suffering of Christ. Uh, Christ did not go kicking and screaming up the Mount of Calvary. He willingly offered himself as a sacrifice for all. And all of the martyrs, we don't celebrate martyrs who did not want to sacrifice their lives in the name and in the image of Christ Jesus himself. And so that, that peaceful serenity that you talk about really was uh, recognizing someone who had achieved that gift and that grace of surrendering herself over to God's will. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's so important of all the martyrs, but specifically as we're uh, talking about her. One other thing would also be uh, when you mentioned her canonization, even before that her beatification, both done by John Paul II, who was a young man in Poland at the time of World War II. And so I uh, think certainly John Paul had a desire to lift up some of these people who he would have seen as true champions, not just of the faith, but what have truly was the right order at that time, that horrible, horrible tragedy and atrocity of World War II, but to choose people like Teresa Benedict of the Cross and others to lift them up out of the ashes, if you will, of those concentration camps and hold them up as examples of how to surrender ourselves to God's will joyfully, uh, bringing an example to others. And certainly at the age of 50, a doctor of philosophy, she understood life, but more importantly, she understood eternal life. And we want to thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. The Communion of Saints was a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program hosts were Father Jim Corda and Father Jack Lavelle.